else to say you're a villain if you're not complying to the government's orders. I'm not saying COVID is not a threat or to people. I'm just saying it's a tool the enemy is using to shift the world's mindset. So it's, it's doable now. That's the thing is, in my grandparents' day, a lot of this stuff was not able to happen. The technology wasn't there. In Revelation 11, verses 7 through 9, says that the whole world will see these two messengers that God sends to Jerusalem. Everybody will hate them for what they're saying, and they'll have the power to not make it rain. And then after a set number of days, they will be killed. And it says the entire world will see their dead bodies laying in the street of Jerusalem for three and a half days. That was not possible just a couple of generations ago. Now we live stream from anywhere on the planet. Mm -hmm. The whole world will be able to see it. It's technologically possible now. Scripture in Isaiah and Jeremiah also says that the city of Damascus will be totally destroyed and uninhabitable. People will not be able to move back there. So nowadays we're thinking there's going to be a nuclear device detonated in Damascus. That will really freak people out, right? And you should be able to point people. Actually, God said this was going to happen. Are you interested in what else he said? Not to prove how right you are, but to draw them to Jesus so that their life is not ruled by fear. We don't talk about these things to freak you out. We mention them because it reminds you that God has got it under control. It is a sign to those who maybe don't believe so they will know that Jesus is real and he is Lord and he loves you and it disarms the fear that the enemy tries to inflict. God gives you signs to direct you, encourage you, and bless you. I shared before how when my wife Paula was up for a vote to become a partner in her law firm and senior partner, she's doing the politics and the math in her head. And, and um, she's like, you need to pray for me. And every time I pray, I get this gut feeling of the verse from Esther, the book of Esther, that God is raising her up to this position for such a time as this to carry her law firm through a critical time. So I tell her that and she's like, yeah, whatever, keep praying. <laughs> So then she gets voted in, and one of her best friends gives her a gift, and she unwraps it, and it's a wall plaque with the verse from Esther. God is raising you up for such a time as this, and she gives me a look. (laughs) Then she goes to her first senior partnership meeting, and uh, they're all in. They're like, congratulations, Paula, for joining the firm. We have snacks over here, and we'll start our meeting in a minute. And um, she leans over to the guy next to her and says, so was it a big argument whether or not to vote me in? And he goes, Oh, no, it was more like a coronation. Are you going to be our Esther? Freaked her out, (laughs) right? Those are signs telling a word that only God can know. That gave her hope, that gave her encouragement, that reassured her that God has got this. Let me give you another sign to another mother named Mary who lives in Oklahoma. Every day she prays for her daughter who is homeless. Her heart is broken. She has no way to contact her daughter, but is always hoping for a sign that she's okay. Thursday night, I posted on Facebook our God's Feeding Hands team that went out to uh, feed and pray with the homeless. Friday, we got the following message on Facebook. Will someone please give me a call? I'm in Oklahoma, but full with tears and so blessed to know and see you were there with my daughter. Please call me. Someone who follows Crosstown on Facebook saw a picture with Shelia and Rose praying over this young woman, and she told a family member, and the family member sent a link to that young woman's mother. I called and talked with her and prayed with her, and she kept thanking me for our church showing kindness to her lost daughter. Praying, not knowing if she's dead or alive, and God sends her a sign. Not only is your daughter alive, but I'm sending my people to her. So she was... 
praying for a daughter, did God give her a sign? Yeah. Was she encouraged? Yes. Was she blessed? Yes. Did she take immediate action? Yes. OMG, call me right away. You're praying with my daughter. What about our team that goes out month after month, seeing these people on the street who just aren't ready to get off the street or can't for some reason or another? The enemy would try to discourage our team, telling them they don't accomplish anything. Did God send them a sign of confirmation, kind of like Elizabeth being pregnant? Yeah, who thought the sign would come from Oklahoma? (laughs) God has shown us that when you pursue God and do what he says, he takes it and impacts people near and far in ways that we never could have guessed. And we feel blessed just for getting to be in the middle of what God is doing. So let me ask you, are you following the signs? Are you trying to make yourself familiar with the things of God so you can see the signs? I don't know if you've ever driven in Mexico. All the signs are in Spanish. If you don't know Spanish, you can't read the signs. If you're not in God's word, you're not going to read the signs because you're not familiar with how he speaks to you. If I didn't know the book of Esther, I wouldn't have put together what God told me about Esther to share with Paula. Make yourself familiar with the things of God. And when you see God doing something, do what you can to get in the middle of it. And let me ask you this. Are you willing to let your life be a sign to point others to Jesus? There are people following Jesus today because they saw what Jesus did in your life. That's called our testimony. And it's not on you to scold them into the kingdom or nag them into the kingdom. It's on you to just let them see how Christ has transformed your life. God is moving. God is doing things. And he's inviting you to be in the middle of it. Just follow the signs and see what he does. Let's go to him in prayer. Lord, we thank you that um, you are always at work around us. Your word says that the whole earth is filled with your glory. And Lord, we don't always see it, but when we step out in faith, we wind up reflecting your glory to a lost and hurting world that feels like they're stumbling in the dark. God, we feel blessed that you would answer a mother's prayers in Oklahoma by just a simple snapshot our team took while praying with this young woman here. Lord, that's just a taste of the kind of things you do. And Lord, we're thrilled to get to be a part of it. So Lord, what else do you got? Lord, make your way plain before us that we would see clearly and turn aside and follow you. Lord, whether it's a burning bush or whatever else you want to do, we want to see you. We want to follow you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, you are out to do us good, and you have called us to yourself to be a light to the world. So, Lord, we invite you to shine brightly in us. Lord, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.